What's up guys, I'm Pause Build, and welcome to this ethical Jurassic Park series in Jurassic World Evolution 2. The goal for this series is to recreate Jurassic Park on Isla Nublar with the same dinosaur species and the number of dinosaurs featured in the movie, but creating the park with a strong focus on the dinosaurs' welfare, getting all the dinosaurs' habitats to be exactly what they want, and hopefully not losing too many guests along the way. This park is built in sandbox mode, but with all the economy and research settings turned on. Details of the sandbox settings are in the description. In the previous video, we set up the park infrastructure and created our first habitat for the Dilophosaurus. And in this video, we're gonna create a giant herbivore habitat. Well, it looks like the rain has just stopped quite suddenly. Um, and we've got a couple of Dilos here. Oh, they're saying hi to each other. I don't think I'd wanna be part of that conversation if I'm honest. Now, we haven't quite finished with this uh, habitat here because we, whilst we built a Dilophosaurus habitat, we didn't add in the, um, what they called the ranger posts. So at the minute, we don't know how our, Dilo how our Dilophosaurus are actually doing. What we need to do is put one or two of these in so that we can cover most of the area, including the feeding areas. So let's put this here and then over here. Um, I think that's good there. And then we've got two ranger posts. And what we can do is if we hit the R key, we can pull up our response facility and assign ranger team one to both of these posts. And now what they're gonna do is they're gonna drive in and they're gonna check out our dilos and basically just do a status check on them, which is just checking up on them, seeing what their needs are like. Um, if we don't do this often enough, we'll run out of comfort data, which is this cloud icon here. So at the minute we can see how they're doing. We know that they're happy. We know they're getting on well but uh, this will go down eventually. So we definitely don't want that. Also, the water's only at 50%. I was thinking that this should probably be 100% because like the forest, I think it's a, uh, you want just as much as you can kind of deal. So let's add a bit more water in to this area. Where have we got water ready? We've got a tiny patch over here. Let's just extend this one out. Uh, maybe add a little bit to this one. If, if we can get that to be 100, I'd really like that. Just to kind of hit the ethical notes that we want in this park. Um, ooh, 79. Okay, I'll keep I'll keep boosting up a tiny bit more. I don't know where they've gone now. Oh, there's one there. 100, there we go. That's just, just sprucing up a little bit um, of, of the water. So now they've got plenty of water. They should be very happy. And before our ranger team goes back, I think... I actually want to take direct control of this one. So I'm going to click direct control and then I can drive our Jeep. How awesome is that? <laughs> so you just drive with the WASD. So W to go forward and A and D to go left and right. And then S if you need to reverse, which hopefully we won't do just yet. And we can drive in and have a little checkup. There's a little go over here. Um, also, if you are driving, one of the most fun things you can do, although it's probably incredibly annoying for you guys listening, is you can hit the H key and you've got your own little horn, which is very fun. <laughs> now, what we can do as well to just help our park out is if you click R, you can do the status check manually. Oh, I'm going to just reverse because I don't think they're very happy with us being here. Yep. Okay. Okay. It's all right. It's all right, is we can rescan them or scan them. But what I want to do is instead hit F and now we can take photos of them. So I'm gonna right click to get rid of this just so I can get a little bit closer. And then I wanna click F and take a photo of all three of them there. You can get as many as you can in, you get a bit more money. So well, we actually got, um, we got two of them socializing, we saw over there, and then we've got one in this left-hand corner and then one somewhere else, I guess, in the shot. And we look how much money we got from that. Um, now, this will go down because if we submit this, uh, then we won't be able to take another photo of the same dinosaur. We'll get like diminishing returns on it because you get like a penalty for taking photos of the same species. I don't know who these photos are sold to, but it's definitely a good hit of cash for us um, and we can definitely use it. So I'm going to leave the goat to its eventual demise. Sorry about that goat. And uh, to drive off here. Now, the issue we have, you can see some alerts are coming up. Well, that's an issue first. I'm just going to refuel the power generators before I explain our issue. Um, to do that, I'm just going to click resupply, put another 50 fuel in, and I'll probably do that to our other uh, generator over here, just because we want some good backup power. Um, now, the issues we keep having is that our dinosaurs aren't very visible. So if I hit the M key, you can see the map, 
and the dinosaurs keep straying into this half of the habitat. There, some of them have moved across now since we've come in, but they're kind of over here where we don't have great visibility. And you can actually see that if you go into the management views, you can click the binoculars and you can see how many dinosaurs they can, they can see from the habitat we've set up. So right now it should be much better because we've got three or four of them. Uh, but when they're all over here, we're not really getting great visibility. So one thing we can do to resolve that is if we go into research and we go attractions, there's the viewing platform. Now, ooh, okay, these guys need to rest. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rest our two scientists that are very tired, and then I'm gonna unlock this, and this will give us a better way to get dinosaur visibility in addition to the viewing platforms we already have. Let, let's, let's rest our scientists and pick that up when we're done. Um, in the meantime, let's add in our power that we just researched in the last episode. So I'm gonna put a small power station in, um, and I'm gonna put it over here. In fact, I wanna keep the, uh, the same grid lines that we have here. So it should be like this. Okay, okay, that's fine. And I might have it be about here. And then just move the path in. So what have we got? We've got our standard path. Let's have a path that comes along there. And then a path that just goes straight into it. How does that look? That looks okay to me. That looks fine. Cool. Um, now what we need with this, this is going to generate the power, but we need to actually locally supply it. And we've got two options. We can either research the repeater substation, um, and then you can build uh, substations as you go along. But we haven't got that yet. So what we're going to do for now anyway is put a small substation in. And we need to connect this with pylons. So I'm going to put one in a good space for all of these. Let's add one in uh, around here near the science center. I would like to put it around the back ideally, but I don't think we're going we're gonna to have that luxury. So let's put the substation here and then connect it to our power station. And now if we go in, we can put pylons in. We've got two types of pylon. We've got this pylon or we have this pylon. And this to me looks much more Jurassic Park kind of old, old pylon, which I like. So I'm going to use these and just move them uh, across here because we're going to need another substation over here where we've got the power. So if we put uh, one pile on there and then we go up here and then let's put a substation. Ooh, can we, one more pile on uh, there and then another substation in here. I'm going to have to fiddle with that slightly so it aligns the path. That's good to me. Okay, let's put that there. And then we needed another one in here, didn't we? Let's put it next to the emergency power. And there we go. We've got a couple of, we've got kind of got a power localized, but at least we've still got the backup generators. And now, now that these substations are running, this will actually be backup power. So it's not going to go lower than 41 unless this substation gets destroyed or, you know, damaged in a storm or something like that. So we can also see how much power we're using. We're only using 22 out of 60. So we only need a small power station for now. Uh, this is definitely enough. Oh no, this is a bad symbol. This means that they are trying to break out. <laughs> They're assessing our fences, uh, which isn't good. If we go into the Ranger, I don't think we need um, to fix this fence. No, they've not actually damaged it. They're just looking for a weak point. Um, it would show up in this screen. If you go onto the Rangers, um, and you click add task, it will show up where any fences are damaged. But I think these guys are thinking about it over here. Um, yep, they're getting a bit suspicious. Um, let's, let's monitor that situation. <laughs> anyway, let's first off research our um, attractions. Now we want the viewing platform. Let's get this now. Um, do cheaper research on that. Oh, you know what? Let's put all of them on it. It'll be done quicker. And the reason is because we want to get our new dinosaur in here for this video. So I wanted to put, and I can never pronounce them, the Parasaurophilus? Parasaurophilus? No, I'm not getting it. Parasaurophilus. There we go. Parasaurophilus. I'm going to put some paras in. And these guys need a park rating of 1.5 stars. Now we've only got 0.9. We're almost there. And the main, the main way you get stars is by improving appeal and getting money from your guests. Essentially, it, it's done on a, a money basis. And um, you can see here, we get our next star in. 
Um, if we earn 162, we'll get one star. At the minute, we're only earning 155, so we can quite easily boost that up. But you can see where our problems are with guest comfort that will lead to uh, to more sales. So these are the re these are the things that give you money essentially or lead to money. Our appeal, we can if we improve visibility, we'll get better appeal. We haven't got any more dinosaurs, so all we can do is improve the visibility, which we're going to do with these towers. And then guess we could definitely add in some of these. So at the minute we have zero restrooms and zero accommodation. So we're also going to fix that right now. Now it's it's very classic on this channel for me to put toilets in as a last resort, <laughs> but I am going to add in some toilets just here um, for our guests, which will massively help the situation we've been having. Ooh, and it's not within any power. I'm going to need to put a new substation in, aren't I? Yeah, or I move the toilets up here. Yeah, you know what? I might just move to save us having to put another substation in right now. Let's just put the toilet right here. And then we'll add another one near the entrance. So we've got better coverage. We put a toilet here. There we go. That should be enough, I think. Yeah, everyone's happy with that coverage. So I bet if we go on our star rating now, our guests... Restroom coverage 100%. We're just going to do the same. We're probably only going to need one hotel, the accommodation. Um, it's choosing location. I'm very tempted to put it in here, actually. Uh, and it can kind of be by the Dilophosaurus habitat. It could be the Dilophosaurus Hotel or something like that. <laughs> uh, in fact, yeah, I think we should do that. We should have a hotel for each dinosaur species we put in that's near their habitat. And we can, we can name it after that. So let's put them in around here. It's not the nicest view of the substation behind is the only problem. But if we put some trees behind, we can kind of mask that. And connect it up. I wanted to leave enough room for when we widen these paths. If we need to move it back slightly, we can always do that. But for now, let's just let's just make sure we've got some plants here as well. I don't think the forest is going to grow naturally. Oh, it is a bit actually. We can always put in some larger trees here um, with the decorations. Oh no, fence broken. Pause of the game. Right, they've eventually broken through. So this little rascal has uh, decided to cause our first breakout. Now, this is the procedure for when when everything just breaks loose. First thing we're going to do, turn all of our bunkers on. So we're going to open all of our shelters. Um, I'm going to play the game for added drama. <laughs> and I'm going to select the first ranger team and add them to come and repair this fence. And then we're going to get our capture helicopter and I'm going to fly this myself. So with these, spacebar is move higher. And I think is shift. Shift is go lower. No, control is go lower. Okay. So we're going to fly over here. So other than that, it's the same controls as the Jeep. And I'm going to hit the R key and see if I can dart this little guy. Ooh, okay, he's pretty, they're pretty quick. But I don't want them to hit anyone. Uh, hit anyone? I mean hurt anyone. I don't think they'll be hitting them. I think they'll be doing slightly worse than that. Thankfully, he's kind of just made a, a run for it and not really gone for any of the guests. Um, have any more of them? Have any more of them broken loose? No, I think it's just the one because our... Oh, no, it is two of them. Right, I'm going to quickly get our ranger. Oh, they're trying to repair it, but they can't. Okay, we've got two that need to be captured. Let's uh, let's take them... Oh, this one's... He's laying down. He's laying down. Right. This should be an easy shot. Oh, and I've missed. Of course, it's an easy shot. There we go. One sedative should be enough for these guys. They're very small. There we go. Successful. Let's get this other one over here. Oh, it doesn't look like we need to now, actually. He's just run back in. So all is well. We just need to repair this fence. I don't know why our ranger team hasn't done that. I think it was being obstructed by one of the dialogues. Um, but that doesn't mean you stop working. Let's, let's go through the habitat, sure. You can also make them go away if you press the R key in the Jeep and use you can use Q and E to cycle through things. Um, if you fire a flare, they uh, will follow the flares generally in game. There you go, he's running after the flare. Which could give you a, a helpful break when you need it. Now I'll let the Jeep get out on his own. But all of everyone is okay. Now let's transport that dinosaur back into its Collect rightful it habitat. I knew we'd have a breakout soon. If there's intelligent ones in here, they just constantly up to no good right and because they're got being airlifted in i'm going to open all of our shelters and let everyone out so whew, sorry about that guys there's a little bit of a scare to all of our guests <laughs> let's call this dilophosaurus oh with capitals dilophosaurus hotel oh it goes capitals anyway 
There we go, and we've got a hotel in here. Now, it's not the most scenic with the pylons. We could always move them. I'm going to leave them for now, and I'm going to put in a decorative tree, as I was about to before they decided to do a bit of a runner. Um, let's put one there, and another one over here. I think that's good, isn't it? That was a bit of excitement. There we go. Um, another thing I want to do is add in our viewing platform. Now we've unlocked it. So I'm going to add one of these just in here. These also go along the fence line. And I think I'm going to have it about here. Now I'm probably going to put two of these in because they will fit. So let's add in another one over here. And yeah, same principle. I want it to be a similar distance apart if possible. So it kind of looks, looks a bit symmetrical. And then continue that path down and join that up. And I'm going to put a third viewing platform on this side. Now, I don't want to do too many viewing platforms. Well, that's not, that's not actually true. I do want to do viewing platforms. I don't want to do loads of them because I kind of think the dinosaurs should have a bit of privacy as well. I don't want them to always be under like the public eye. Seems a little bit unfair for them. So they've still got part of the habitat that they won't be viewed at. Um, over here and they're uh, exploiting that wonderfully <laughs> right now but much there's much better coverage now you can see of the habitat now we've added in these these viewing platforms let's have a look through one of them as well so this is what they'll see um which is you know pretty i guess a much more realistic view of what it would actually be like if they built one of these parks but i think that's pretty cool you'd have binoculars you'd be able to see through there you go someone up there have you got binoculars or are you just staring into the distance Oh, they're having a great time. They're loving it. See? Everyone loves them. Already a hit. And this should be massively helping. Oh, wow. Look at our stars. Where are we at now? Where are we at on our appeal rating? Let's go into research and see if we can almost get... Oh, we've done it. We've unlocked them. Oh, perfect. I must have missed the notification, but we've hit 1.5. So we've unlocked the dinosaur for this episode. Woo! Okay. Let's go into expeditions then and get them. Now, they are going... There they are. Right. Cheaper expeditions. You know what? Let's send the whole team out. Let's just make it quicker. Get all three of them out there. And they can get us some para fossils. And we could put them in very soon. Ooh, there's a fight between them. That's not good. Is our jeep in there? Yeah, let's see if we can break the, that fight up. Blare the horn at them a bit. I don't know where they were. See if we can use a flare, a couple of flares out. I'll stop them fighting. Bit of distraction. I don't know where they were. Well, I think they were. I think it was here. Okay, it was okay. They had a bit of scrap. I was, well, if you're gonna go for alpha, then be warned. They might they might kick you. <laughs> you're gonna get a bit nibbled or something if you're gonna try and fight someone for dominance. I think that's kind of on you. Uh, looks like our, our facilities, apart from shopping, our food and drink are doing very well. Our shopping's, we don't really need any more right now, but it's good to know. And hopefully, once we get some more dinosaurs in as well, we're going to massively boost this. Now, the plan for this, um, I don't know if they can all go together, but I would like to have a, a habitat that has loads of dinosaurs in it, like loads of herbivores all together. I'm going to make this path slightly wider, I think. Um, delete this one and then I want to have this be on the same uh, the same line oh yeah it's not it's not aligned is it right let's let's put this in here that's pretty good how long do we want it I think we want it about there to be honest let's go here oh that's not quite straight I'm gonna delete it that's no, not quite straight. These things really annoy me. Right. I think this... I think this is about uh, central there. Let's place that. Link this up. And then we just need to move this path again very slightly to be a bit more central. I think is about... Oh, I'm going to wait for it to build and then we'll... Uh, we'll be able to see exactly where it is. Okay, that's just built. So let's whack a... Ooh, classic standard path. Which path have I been using? I've been using the normal ones, haven't I? Classic standard path. Yeah, I need that on here. So I've been using the wrong paths. Right, let's replace them. And then... 
try and put this in the middle. I think the middle is about there. So I'm going to use that as my line. Ignoring that little bit. There we go. Now we have a new area. Let's put a fence in. Uh, we are going to want a bigger fence at some point. But for now, let's whack this in. And I want this to be quite a large habitat because my plan is to have the Parasolophilus, the Brachiosaurus, the Gallimimus, and the Triceratops all in one massive herbivore habitat. Because I think that'll be really cool. Um, I'm just thinking about whether they'll all be able to be housed together. But if they're not, we can always break up the, uh, the habitat later. So for now, let's just proceed on the basis that we can have them together. And probably have something that goes like this. Okay, I think that's quite large <laughs> and probably what we need because I want to have enough um, viewing galleries that we can still see in. Now, I know this is going to mean that there's this whole area back here that the, that the dinosaurs can't be seen through if we put viewing areas along this edge. However, I kind of like that dinosaurs have a bit more privacy. Um, just as we did for the Dilophosaurus, we're leaving this section back here. And also, there's going to be so many herbivores in this habitat that the guests are always going to see something. So I think it's going to be absolutely fine like this. I'm going to hit play and these fences are going to start building. Um, and I'm going to put in some viewing galleries along these edges uh, just to build up our visibility. And all of this is going to need power. Um, we also need a hatchery. Now, I know some of you in the comments were mentioning that you don't actually need a hatchery. And that is absolutely true. You don't need a hatchery for every habitat because you can airlift release some of, some of your dinosaurs if you want. But I kind of like the idea that we're not unnecessarily drugging the dinosaurs and airlifting them into habitats. And also, I really like the animations of releasing the dinosaurs. So I'm going to keep them in for those two reasons. Just because I think it fits more with the ethical like theme, doesn't it? If, if we're not unnecessarily um, sedating them and taking them out. I mean, fair enough if we need to because they're attacking guests. That's one thing. But, um, but you know, to do it unnecessarily just to make it easier to airlift them into habitats, I don't think, you know, we don't need to. We can just build a building here. Um, now, I'm going to put in some power for this. I think it makes more sense at the substations around here as well. Um, I know it's not, not necessarily the most convenient location, but this is the most uh, staff oriented building we have. So it makes sense to me that they'd build a substation right here. Um, I'm just checking I avoided the parking there, which I did, uh, because that wouldn't be very logical <laughs> to put that in there. And then let's carry these pylons across. Uh, about there. And then we can build them along here. Need to check what we're going to have. But for now, that works and everything's connected. And these will all be connected when the cabling, when the when the fence goes in. It's just going to take a little while to build. So we should also make sure we've built the paths for this section. I'm just going to connect this all up to paths. Okay, that, that's come in nicely. I like that. And this is a nice big area. So this is looking good. This is looking very, very good. Now, I think our expeditions have come back as well. So let's make sure our fossils are getting analyzed by our scientists. And we can assign two to this, can't we? Let's put our best ones on this for the genetic skill. We could probably look at getting some more scientists now as well. If we're going to have more dinosaurs in here, we're going to be bringing in more money. Um, I think that's a good, that's a reasonable plan. And I'd like to have a little uh, area down here for our guests. You know, a bit of a, we can put some attractions in. We haven't gotten it yet, but we can put some attractions in. We can put some more amenities in, um, which I think would be good for them. Now, we can actually have a look at what research we can do with the scientists we have left. Who's not doing something? Oh, he's got four. That's actually probably doable. Uh, okay, that's five. <laughs> 
Is anything four or are they all five? It looks like they're all five skill that we need. Uh, oh, there we go. Medium electrified fence. We definitely need that. Let's get this guy on it. There we go. We can get some, get two things done at once. Get, an ex get the fossils analyzed and get some research done. Now, this one's looking mischievous. He's just dreaming about breaking out. <laughs> That's what he's doing. But this looks like it's working uh, quite well now. They're, uh, they're bringing in the money we need. We've got two-star park. That's that's not bad. Just from one dinosaur species isn't bad. And everyone's kind of enjoying themselves, as far as I can tell. I love the waterfall in the background. It's such a nice, such a nice thing to have. Ooh, we've got a storm warning. Okay, okay. Quickly, open all shelters. This is the worst thing that could happen. Oh no, oh no, oh no. And I bet we don't have the right amount of emergency bunker coverage now. No, we don't. So let's put one in at this point down. Mm, let's put one in here. It's going to cover this area. Oh no. Um, okay, well there's no one over here because there's nothing down here yet. So we should be okay. Oh dear, how are they already out? Okay, Ranger Team, please fix that fence. I'm going to prioritize fixing the fences first because that's the... The main thing that matters. And then you can just add them to tranquilize them. But I think this calls for, for more practice hands, which I definitely don't have. <laughs> oh no, there's still people here. Okay, this isn't good. Okay, come. Please, please don't. Well, at least he's running the right way. Why, why is this one's obsession? If, if it's the same one, they have like an obsession with leaving this way. They've never seen it. Maybe they've seen something out here that they really want. Okay, well, there's three there. Um... I think we have five in this habitat. Uh, I can only see four, which I don't like. Okay, well, he's at least down. Let's see if we can get him from here. Whoa, it's quite shaky. We're very far away. I'm gonna go to... There we go, a hit. And he's down. Okay, okay. Well, let's get our ranger team to fix this as well. And this, and this. Oh, no, that's not good. Okay, there's quite a few things damaged by that storm. Um, they can repair everything, though. Which is going to cost us a little bit, unfortunately. Oh, well, at least we've got we've got the finances for it. Now, let's transport this guy back into his habitat. And then we can open the bunkers as well for everyone. Right, everyone can come out. It's fine. Nothing to be scared of. Although that, that fence. <laughs> oh no, no, the fence is fixed. The fence is fixed. Okay. Whew. It's just the building. And now these guys need more fuel. Okay, well, we can resupply them. I'm going to fill up their fuel and fill up their food as well. Because we know that we're going to use it in the long term. And we've got a bit of cash right now. So I want to make sure we've got that, definitely. I'm not filling up the emergency uh, generators because they don't need to be full, really. Um, we do need this hatchery to be fixed soon. Though. They're on it. They're on it. Okay. So that could be worse. We can also do these jobs ourselves. We can just direct control and, and go over. I think it's a bit quicker when you do it yourselves. Like, I think you can drive faster than the AI does. Um, oh, another fun thing you can do is if you're driving, you can use the space bar to do, like, handbrake turns, which could be like that. <laughs> so you can have fun, like, drifting around your parks. <laughs> and, obviously, blaring the horn. Why wouldn't you? They just look so cool, though, don't they? I love the, the little jeeps. Uh, you can also turn the radios on and off. I think I have the radios turned off. Um, but then you get a little radio that can play as well if you're going. Another great thing, actually, if you are in the jeep and you have the radio on, is when there's a storm, they'll actually warn you on the radio just before there's a storm warning come up. So if you listen in when you're driving around, you can get a few seconds head start that can actually really help you out with your emergency bunkers to make sure that everyone's in the emergency bunker before the storm comes and the dinosaurs get out. So a little tip there. <laughs> okay, let's look at how well we've done on this genome. We've got 65%, that's not bad. Um, they got the thirsty trait, which isn't ideal, but they've also got tolerant and social. That's, that could be worse, that could be worse. Okay, well, this isn't hatchery four, it's hatchery two. Why did you do this to me? Right, well, let's send our teams back out to get more of this. Um, where did they go? I wonder if it's one of those that you can only go to once and then it blocks it off. And you have to find more elsewhere. Well, there's some up there, but we're going to get a bit of a mix up there. I think that's the best we have. I'm assuming it's not found anywhere else. 
Um, no. Okay, that's fine. Let's go here. Uh, let's send cheaper. Let's send all of them. Go on. Go on, team. The dream team. They must know each other so well by now. The amount of, the amount of school trips they've got on together. Oh my God, what is happening here? Oh, it's all of our staff. Wow, we, we hire a lot of employees. My goodness. And it looks like our guests are going the wrong way. But hopefully we've got some more people coming in. Yeah, come on, everyone. More staff, apparently. Well, that's good. <laughs> Just an excessive amount of staff. But we've still got a good amount of people in these. We could probably do with some more uh, amenities, actually. Particularly food and drink down here. Should we build a little guest area in? Oh, I'll take, that's what we need. Th these paths are getting very overcrowded. You can, you can turn overcrowding on and off. But you can tell that this area is getting very overcrowded. So we need to turn this into a main thoroughfare. And that will help us out massively with that. But for that, we need research. And for research, we need scientists. So we're going to have to wait till these guys are back. Oh, this one's on the hunt, I think, for a goat. Oh, oh no. Oh, they're just running in parallel with it. No, they're turning. They're turning. I think they're coming for this goat. Oh, or that one. <laughs> the worst hunting scene ever. It's so lazy. Well, I mean, you know. If it's not broken, don't fix it. There's already there's already one there. Oh, this one's gonna hunt the goat. This one's on it. You, some of you guys were for the the live food, and some of you were for the just meat food. I think Cena's. Oh, there he goes. He's got it. Oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> I think seen as this park is focused on the the like welfare of the dinosaurs. This is the only thing in game that allows us to give them any kind of hunting. And I feel like that's kind of important. So I'm going to prioritize that for now um, and leave the live feeders in just because I think it's probably better for them um, if we're thinking about the dinosaurs. But I do completely understand the other way as well. Now, there's the medium electrified fence we've already unlocked. We should probably upgrade all of this fence to be medium power. And for that, I want to make sure that they're not in the area because they tend to have a bit of time to do it. And what you should probably really do is build a new fence line and then replace the old one. But I can never be asked to do that. So I just do this <laughs> and let it build slowly. Let's upgrade this fence gradually. Um, and let's also set the, our scientists to sort out some fossils. Wow, we found platinum. That's a good day, isn't it? Wow. Okay, well, that's helped our finances immensely. Let's do a bit more research on the little powers. Okay, we found a, we found a couple, a couple for them, so that's good. Um, let's put these guys on it and set this one to rest. And then continue. Oh, yeah, it says we've got a dinosaur threat. It's because they're, they're technically there's a gap in their fence line, but it's not actually a threat. It's okay. Um... They're actually all good. Let's continue to do this along here because I think it's getting... They're, they're all the way over there and it's catching up. So let's carry on. I just don't want too big a hole in the, in the habitat. This may have been a bit... Uh, <laughs> a little bit testing it. But there we, we'll see. We'll see how they do. They're all over here right now. Oh, and that one. Oh, it's a ranger team. No danger to guess at all. Full belly. Look how many goats there are in here. I don't know whether we've... I don't know whether they uh, need to be doing it this often, actually. We've got two feeders in here. I mean, I, we can leave them. But their usage is low. Uh, we can see. We can always knock it down to one. Because they just seem to be an excessive... There's another one here now. An excessive amount of goats in this habitat. Well, we'll, we'll see how they go. We'll see how they go. Um, I'm going to keep replacing the fence up here. And uh, gradually move this across. You can see that the, uh, the the rating for this is strength three rather than strength two. The gates are strength five out of the door, so they're not going for the gates, but they will find the weak spot in the fences. And for now, these these strength two fences aren't ideal. They've already managed to break through them. I think we definitely need at least a strength three, if not higher. But this will increase our power requirements. So we have to. Oh, this it looks like our power's out actually. I should have checked that when we built all the new stuff. So what will be happening will be our yeah, our backup generators will be basically splitting the difference. If we're not meeting the power requirements, they step in. We don't really want that. We want it to be fully powered. So I'm going to put in another power station here in the staff area. And hopefully, if we join these up, 
And hopefully this will help sort us out in that regard. Now I don't like that path there, so I'm going to delete this and try and connect them like that. That's better. Oh, and we had facility, didn't we? There we go. That's why it doesn't match up. These are all facilities. These are all standard ones. Now, I put the wrong pass on here. And now they're all the right color. Cool. Okay, we've done our fossil research as well. Let's rest our scientists and see what our genome's like in the hatchery. Ooh, 89. Okay, we need to do a bit more then. No, I saw you. I saw you. Right. Everyone get in. You fix this fence now. In fact, let's get both of you out here. Why not? And we will get in the chopper for what feels like the hundredth time. <laughs> this is the problem with the intelligent trait. They just constantly looking for a way to get out. If you guys know actually of anything you can do that will stop them um, from trying to break out, please let me know. And I'm more than happy to, uh, to make some changes. Oh yes, we got them. That was one shot, nice. Let's move them back in. That's not too disruptive. They're okay. We fixed the hole in the fence. Let's close the shelters. And hopefully it won't be a problem for too long because they're moving away from this area. So we can slowly put in these nice, slightly stronger fences again. Just hesitant to do it where they're actually standing. I might actually just shoot a flare over there as well. Just to keep them away. And we can do a quick change and they hopefully won't notice. Let's fire a couple more flares. Oh, look, 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 bright lights. Isn't that, in isn't that interesting? There we go. <laughs> look, oh, there we go. And they filled in. So they've got a uh, level three fence the whole way around now. A medium electric fence. Perfect. A little bit stronger. They'll hopefully keep them in. Oh, apart from there. What happened there? I must have missed a section. Okay, apart from this bit, which is going to be filled in soon. Okay, our scientists have just recovered, which means I'm going to send them back out again because I want to get this 100% genome. Let's see what's available. Okay, I've had a look and it looks like we need more research to unlock more of this dig site. So I don't think we're gonna be able to do that for now, which means we have as much of the genome as we can at this point. And it's enough to make them. It's just a bit more, uh, a bit more high cost, I guess. Yeah, we've got to research more to unlock, but we're at 89%. So we're pretty good. Let's actually research some wider paths, I think, um, which I believe is under infrastructure. Is at the bottom? Maybe it's not. Oh, we do need the paleo medical facility too. But right now, no one's injured. So let's go for guest comfort, the wide paths. That's it. Uh, let's get some cheaper research. Uh, in fact, let's just get all of them on it and it'll be done much quicker. So if this is as good as we're going to get, I think maybe we should start having a look at creating some of these guys. Let's modify the genome. And you guys were saying that for all of these dinosaurs, if they don't have a 1993 skin, it's because the original skin is the one that was actually in the film. So we're going to go with the Death Valley blank pattern color, which I think from memory is the one they have in the film anyway. So I think you guys are right for this one as well. Um, I'm pretty sure that is the case. Now, we want to make sure these guys have long, a long lived. We might as well whack that on 100%. It just adds a bit of extra cost. Um, oh, that does mean that we need more genetics though. We could do it with 75%. Um, yeah, okay. Let's let's save and exit. And then let our scientists do their thing and see what their skills are. Well, actually, we can look at their skills now. Yeah, they've not they're not great. They've only got six. We could look at getting someone else. Who else have we got? Please say we can have a genetics expert or something. That would be good. They're quite good at it. Is anyone actually genetic specialist? There we go. This is exactly what we need. <laughs> so perfect. Tyson, welcome to the team, my friend. Confirm. Tyson's a genetic specialist. They're going to help us out massively with this. Right, we're going to wait for them to finish their research on the wide path, and then we're going to start breeding some long lived Parasolophilus. I think I said it right that time. Okay, let's have a look at getting some of these guys now. Let's modify the genome and just add in that 100% long live chance. Right, save and exit. Let's assign scientists to them. We could look at getting some other traits um, for these guys. You know what? Let's have a little look. Before we dive head first, 
let's have a little look into our research and look at gen gene modification. We could get some of these. Ooh, positive temperament. Oh, okay. That's quite good. If they were accommodating, that would actually be really good for the ethics, thinking about it. Because they'd be, you know, they'd be even more happy with their environment if we made them less fussy about it. So in fact, I think we might have to go for this. Right, and it seems like we can get it with these guys. We can do it with these three. It's 140. I think we've got to do this. Let's get that. That's perfect. And then we can look at adding that too. And hopefully we'll still have the skills and the team to be able to do it. Um, if not, we'll have to gamble and make some of them like 75% chances instead of 100 or something like that. Okay, we've just unlocked it. So let's have a look at what that looks like on our dinosaur. What does this mean? Oh, and this is thirsty. Oh, I think that was one of them we had here as well. Does this mean we can fix one of their like social, one of their like genetic defects? Would we even call it that though? I suppose it is because it's a negative trait we can improve and make them more drought tolerant. Yeah, if we can make them less thirsty, I think we've got to do that too. Let's let's do that again and uh, just another quick bit of research and then we can make them even more accustomed to their environment. I think we've got to do that. Just doing a little bit of a checkup on these guys. Oh, it looks like there's a bit of damage to something over here coming up on the radar. Please don't say there's a fence. Oh no. Oh, that's actually interesting. Look, they've had a go. Oh no, they have done it. <laughs> can we get in there? No. Can we block it, I wonder? Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. Right, let's get the let's get the ranger team out. Let's get the capture team on it. I don't even think we need the bunkers, to be honest, because they're running away from all the guests again. Right, you two capture them. Let's repair that fence. That took them a while to get through, though, didn't it? So that's actually quite promising. This one is over here. Oh, stop it. Why did you do this? Intelligent dinosaurs. Whose idea was that? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a really dangerous zone as well. Right here. Stop it. Right, let's see if we can flare and distract them. There we go. I've gone for the flare. That's, that's helped us there. If we've actually stopped them breaking out in that instance. And we can transport these guys in. Heading to collect the asset. So we may just need more heavy duty fences. Eventually we'll get like actual heavy duty fences or large fences. And I don't think they'll have a, a chance of breaking through. Uh, it's just where we've got these other ones are slightly smaller. They've got a bit more of a chance of it. Right, let's do this. Let's. So if we, we can improve them. Wow, there we go. So it re reduces the rate of health loss to dehydration and the frequency of the dinosaur needing to drink. Can we just keep adding this up? Oh, it makes it 10. We do have the ability to do that though. So if we have 100% quenched, it costs 10. We've got 11 in the team, but I think we can only assign three of our scientists. So yeah, we can, three. So we can still do this though. This is 10 out of 10, which is using our team's whole uh, genetic prowess to do this. We could do it. Let's let's synthesize a batch and then we'll do another one and uh, see what we can get. So this is a batch size of six. Now you guys were saying, if we go into the cloud icon here, yes, it does say, it tells you who it can share uh, habitats with and um, what its actual requirements are. So it needs 7% water, a minimum of four. It needs 71% open space and 21% ground nut. So it's gonna need ground nut, which is interesting. I think we can, it doesn't like Doctor Who's hybrids. I don't think anyone does. <laughs> uh, but it's good that it likes sauropods, like the Brachiosaurus. Or, oh, it's really testing me now. Ornithomimosaurid, sorid, I've said that wrong. Um, like the Gallimimus and Ceratopsid, like the Triceratops, which are the four animals I'm proposing to put together. So hopefully they'll all get on just fine in here, which would be really awesome. Like you imagine this is like a massive sanctuary for them. I just love that. <laughs> But for now, I think we'll actually edit the habitat as we put them in and give them what each of them need. I want to kind of have an area for each of them near the viewing areas too. That's like really what that one needs. And then the rest is kind of more general. Oh, our park rating's gone down. It's okay. It's okay. It's probably just that the Dilophosaurus moved away and we don't have many dinosaurs here. Oh my. Oh no. Oh no. What? Someone should be keeping a tally on this. How many fence breaks have we had now? I'm just going to assign them and let them go quickly. Let's, we don't want any deaths. Let's open the shelters. Why not? I wonder how many deaths we've actually had here. Should we have a look? 
I think it's in finances, ironically. Um, lawyer fees. Oh, we've had some. I think that's what that is. <laughs> oh, guest approval is only 30, 33% at the minute. That's not great. Probably because of our security rating, because we've not done very well on that. <laughs> uh, I bet the adrenaline junkies are, are much more into it now. Um, okay. I think we'll leave. I can't see. Can you guys tell me where? And maybe they don't keep it because it's a bit of a morbid stat. But how many incidents we've had? I imagine it's quite a few now. And is this another broken fence that we've just had? Right. Where are the dinosaurs? There's one there. Oh, okay. I think the rest of them are fine. Uh, this one needs to be transported in. You need to drive more quickly, my friend. There we go. Repair the fence. That's the stuff. Now everyone's safe again. Whew. That's what we like. And let's synthesize another batch of these guys. Also, we need to open all our shelters. <laughs> okay, we've got two batches now. Let's have a look at what... We've got three viable eggs and five viable eggs. So that's good. Ooh, these... Are, oh, yeah, we don't have any negative traits. I keep going, ooh, there's no negative traits. But we, we're not going to. Look at these guys. They've got great stats. Okay, this one's perfect. If this is the alpha, that would be awesome. It gives it 40% dominance as well, so I think it probably will be. Um, oh, there's a few of them that are. That's great. This one's toler uh, This one's social as well, and tolerance. This would be the best leader possible. Um, and let's have a look at the others. Um, we've got quenched on quite a few of these as well. Docile, never terrorizes guests, guess, never attacks ranger teams. That's quite nice. Well, I think we should we should have all of these, um, and we need to we need to, a minimum group size of four, don't they? So let's let's do these five first. Oh, okay. We're gonna need to rest our team up, but we need five, and we can use three. So these guys can definitely do it. Let's just rest them all up so they go back to uh, back to zero on uh, how many tasks they've done. Okay, everyone's rested up. Let's assign the viable eggs again. Assign scientists. There we go. Commence. It's going to cost 775,000, but it's definitely going to be worth it. I think I'm going to incubate both batches and then we can release them all together. We've also just hit two stars on the park rating. So we've unlocked a, a flying and water dinosaurs, but we're not going to be doing those in this series because we are just creating Jurassic Park. We will definitely do them in a future series if you guys are interested, because I think they're so cool. <laughs> So we will be doing them in the future. If you Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see that. Also, let me know in the comments what you want our Dilophosaurus to be called. Uh, we haven't actually renamed anyone in this series, but I'm definitely happy to. And this one has a mischievous look on its face. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you want all of our dinosaurs to be called. And we can definitely do that. I'm going to get in this uh, ranger team here because I think they're about to cause some mischief over there. I want to shoot a few flares off to try and keep them at bay. Come on, guys. Go away. I scare them off. I think only really the compies are scared by uh, by beeping. It normally attracts the, uh, the big dinosaurs, but even if they attack me, I can lure them away. They're just standing still in front of the damage they've done. Right, look. Chase that. Come on. Come on, guys. Get these flares. Come on, get the flares, get the flares. Let's move away. It's just because this one's laying down in front of it. I won't let you repair them if they're right there. Don't point the flare gun at it like that. <laughs> this is an ethical park. I mean, standing next to it, beeping is it exactly... Oh, I'm not doing anything wrong, though. Oh, and one of them's hurt. Oh, there we go. Just just literally as I quit the vehicle, it, uh, they leave. Right, repairing friends. Let's go, let's go. Repair that fence. Thank you. Finally. Um, one of them's injured. That's not good. Okay. Well, we need to research our MVU then. That's, that needs to be our next priority. Let's get this going. What do we need? Oh, two of them. Okay. That's fine. Let's do that quickly. Now, I think we've just synthesized both batches here as well. Um, these guys are ready for release and these guys... We don't have the abilities in team to do it without this research. So let's do the uh, the medical research first. Put the MVU in, um, and then we can release our all of our Paralophosauruses, something like that. <laughs> we can release them all together. Okay, we've just got the Paleo Medical Facility. So this is in operations. It will be here, and I'm going to put this over here by this hatchery um, because I think we've got enough vehicles elsewhere that this is actually quite a good spot for it. 
Um, I do want to check the levels here that they're not really weird. Uh, let's just make sure that's... Yeah, it should be fine. Oh, not a staff center. A paleo medical facility. Very different building. Oh, and look, we've got all our paths. We haven't moved them. Okay, uh, we want classic facility path. Um, and don't want replace. I just want the normal standard placement. There we go. Let's do that. And then I think this is in line. We can always move it later if it's not. This path is uh, is moving. Oh, we, we want we don't want facility path. We want normal path because that's the one they're walking on. <laughs> and we should actually look at moving all of this to wide path now uh, because these are all having issues this area. So I'm going to upgrade this whole main area into wide path. And then we can actually have a main thoroughfare when we unlock that. But for now... Um, the wide path is definitely sufficient for our needs. Let's upgrade all of this. Look how green it's going. That's what we like to see. Okay. I'm just going to have all of this be wide. There we go. Much better. Much better capacity for our guests. Cool. Okay. Well, we've got slight strain on the backup generator. I don't know why that is. I think we're generating enough power. Uh, four of 60. Yeah, we are. Okay. So it must have just been because of the storm or last time it got it got broken. I don't know. Oh, and our MVU is built. It seems like the dinosaur's illness has gone away, though. It might have just been a scratch, but at least we have this for the future. Um, so we've got our little ambulance right there, which I love. <laughs> we will use that in the future if any of them get any injuries. Hopefully that won't happen. For now, let's incubate all of these with our scientists. And when they have incubated, we will release them all together. That's the next thing we're going to do. And it's just started to rain annoyingly, but we have our dinosaurs ready for release. Let's see what these guys look like. So this next dinosaur, the Parasaurolophus, has a flair for the dramatic, especially where its head is concerned. It has a distinctive cranial crest, which is used for added resonance in its vocalizations and to regulate its body temperature. Oh, I don't want to interrupt uh, Isaac there, but we just had a little breakout again. So we're going to open the shelters, standard procedure now. Let's fix this fence and let's get this dinosaur darted. In fact, this is probably going to be the last flight of the episode. So let's do this together. And then we can have a little look at our paras in their habitat and make sure it's what they need. Yes, can't escape me. <laughs> right, let's transport him back in. Naughty one, that one. My goodness. Right, and we can close all the shelters because everyone's fine. The fence is fixed. Just a spot of rain for these poor little guys. Oh, it looks like it's stopped now, though. Right, let's release the other ones in the sunlight and uh, they can hopefully all form a little herd together, which would be adorable. They're so pretty, aren't they? Look at them. Very, very cool. Now, these guys have slightly different requirements to our Dilophosaurus because where we were just putting in feeders, the herbivores don't need feeders. These are these are all for carnivores and piscivores and things like that. So what they actually need is the plants themselves. So we need to go into our environment and put down the right kind of food for them from these options. Now, let's check again what they need. In here, it says they need ground nut. That's what they eat. And they need water. They need open space. It doesn't actually have any forest requirements. So I'm not going to put that in for now. Uh, but if other animals, in, if other dinosaurs in their habitat do require it, we'll definitely put that in. For now, let's put a nice big couple of lakes in. In this area. We can always reduce all of this as we go on. But I think that's, that's a good few areas where they can get water from. And then we're going to put in some ground nut. 
you're basically looking for what this type of plant provides, we can see this one doesn't provide ground nut. This one doesn't provide ground nut, but this one does provide ground nut. So let's put a good amount of ground nut in this area. I feel like I've said ground nut too many times. <laughs> now they're going to need... Oh, here we go. This one's got an undiagnosed issue as well. An undiagnosed illness. So we need to sort that out. We don't want it to just be the plants either because they, they have a requirement for open space. But this is probably about what they need. I'm tempted to put some more at the back like that. Let's check on what they need. Oh yeah, this is definitely enough. By the time they actually expand out, they'll have plenty in this little area here and then when we release the other dinosaurs we can kind of populate a bit more what everyone needs but this is definitely good enough for them for now now oh they've already got rid of their common cold now there are 15 powers in jurassic park so we need to make more than just this eight but we can definitely do that in the next episode because i think we've done loads today i think it's probably time we learn a little bit about these beautiful creatures parasaurophilus is an average sized hadrosaur native to north america and measuring around nine meters in length. It's distinguished by its prominent curved head crest, which extends out from the back of its head. And its name translates to near crested lizard. Whilst it usually walks on four legs, it can rear up onto two legs if it needs to run or reach food in high places. Like all other hadrosaurs, Parasaurophilus is vulnerable to predation from most carnivores, meaning that its sole defense against predators is to avoid them. Some early paleontologists thought that the head crest was used as a defensive weapon or as a way to to push branches out of the way as it roamed through dense growth. The most common belief now though is that the crests were used as an amplifying chamber for communication and for displaying to potential mates. Parasaurophilus lived in a seasonal and warm swampy environment with lots of rivers and floodplains dating back around 75 million years to the late Cretaceous period. And it looks like a storm is about to start. So I'm going to open all the shelters and probably call it there for today's video. If you guys have liked this video, please give it a like. It really helps the channel out and I'll see you in the next one.